year ago, we investigated a commuter crash that shed light on a sea change in the airline industry. The Buffalo crash of Continental 3407, the deadliest U.S. air accident in eight years. Major carriers were outsourcing more and more flights to independent regionals. Major transformation in the airline industry. Raising serious questions about safety. After the broadcast, we heard from hundreds of pilots and airline mechanics, too. As an aircraft maintenance technician with United Airlines, I'd like you to follow up on this story with an investigation on aircraft maintenance. The flying public has no idea what shenanigans go on behind the curtain. Much of this heavy maintenance is being done by the lowest bidder. As a former airline pilot with 25 years in the industry, this scares me the most. We also talked to the co-pilot who helped safely land flight 1549 into the Hudson River. He's worried about airline maintenance too. Ten years ago, maintenance was virtually all done in-house in by the airline that's flying the airplane. Now, uh, heavy maintenance is mostly done uh, by people who are unrelated to the airline that's flying, uh, that's flying you as a passenger and, and sometimes not even in this country. So we decided to examine the airline maintenance industry and started at its annual convention here in Phoenix. They call themselves MROs for Maintenance, Repair and Overhaul. Uh, let's see. It's a highly competitive business MROs from all corners of the globe were here trying to drum up business with U.S. airlines. So what's the advantage? Why would, uh, why would a U.S. airline fly an airplane all the way to Turkey mm -hmm. to get uh, maintenance done? What's the advantage to going to Turkey and your company? The, firstly, the quality is very high. Right. The second is the price. The pricing is uh, very reasonable for the uh, outside. Is lab labor is cheaper in Turkey? Yes, labor is yeah. cheaper than. Most major airlines now outsource the majority of their heavy maintenance, some as much as 70% or more. It's all to keep the airlines competitive and efficient, says MRO spokesperson Sarah McLeod. What I would look at is what business am I in? Am I in the business of flying passengers or cargo? Or am I in the business of maintaining my fleet? The core business is to ensure a safe trip, though, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, but that's a given. I mean, I'm not going to stay in business very long if I'm going to be crashing aircraft. So part of your business is obviously to keep airworthy aircraft. But if I can have you do it more efficiently, it's kind of foolish for me not to. One carrier that led the way into this new era is United Airlines. It used to do virtually all its major maintenance in-house. But facing bankruptcy and competitive pressure from industry upstarts like Southwest, United began outsourcing more of its repair work. Now about 60% of its maintenance is contracted out to independent MROs. Maintenance traditionally has been sacrosanct. There was one area where the industry collectively said, no, that's not something we can cut. In, in recent years, we've seen a change, and I don't think that we have yet seen all the manifestations of that change. At United, first and foremost, we had to get our own house in order. At the MRO conference, United's then president, John Tague, spoke about the economic challenges facing the airline industry. Probably about as and I asked him about this outsourcing trend. What can you say to the public about that trend and whether that ultimately could erode uh, the possibility of continued safety in the airline business? Uh, you know, I think it's wholly unrelated. I would ask them to take a journey with me to Amico in Beijing. Um, we have to get past this view that any work that's done in the U.S. is de facto done better. It's just not true. I'd like to take you up on that offer. Would you take us to Amico? Sure, absolutely. We thought that was a great idea. Amico is one of Asia's largest MROs, doing maintenance on United wide-body jets since 2005. We arranged a visit with Amico in China. We got visas and tickets. Then just days before our trip, Amico suddenly canceled. But we knew about another place here in the U.S. where United has moved its maintenance. And I flew to Mobile, Alabama to take a look. This is one of the larger independent repair facilities in the U.S. It's owned by a company called ST Aerospace. 
According to statistics I've seen, ST is the largest of all of the MROs, the outsourced facilities worldwide. This is a Singapore-based company that has opened maintenance facilities in the United States. Since 2002, ST has been doing a lot of maintenance here in Mobile for major airlines like United, Delta, and U.S. Airways, carriers that used to do almost all their maintenance in-house. ST would not allow us to visit or grant an interview, but we talked to many ST workers, from line mechanics to supervisors. Here at Papa Buddha's, a bar in Mobile, we heard a lot about long hours, hard working conditions, and the pressure mechanics were under to move the planes. A few agreed to talk, but only if we would protect their identities. To be honest, if you have one inspector and you have... One, we'll call him John, worked at a major airline for many years before joining ST. Everything that's being done. What were your marching orders when you were inside ST? It was typically push. I mean, you, you know, you were given X amount of time to accomplish a task, and they wanted to keep moving forward faster and faster, you know? Whatever it takes to get it done, get it done. Though ST wouldn't let us in, secretly we did get footage from inside the facility. It's a place where another veteran mechanic told us about a shortcut he'd seen used called pencil whipping. If I was pencil whipping a job, that means I'm just going to sign it off without doing the maintenance and lie about what I did so that we don't lose time, you know, fixing it. You whip the problem with the pencil. That's right. It's not a wrench. Beat it right on down. That's pencil whipping. We showed what the mechanics at ST had told us to veteran FAA inspector Linda Goodrich. It's just devastating to hear things like that because it's just, you know it happens, it's, you know, and it's, and just for the exact reasons that he said, but you can't take shortcuts. You can, this is an industry, you can't take shortcuts. It will come back to bite you. This kind of shortcut was discovered at ST last spring. According to an internal company document obtained by Frontline, U.S. Airways found fuel leaks in three of its planes that had been serviced at ST Mobile. An investigation found that mechanics had signed off the work as completed, when in fact, the work was not. Failures that could have resulted in serious aircraft mishaps. This is very serious. Because if they're willing to do it for something as important as this, then they're willing to do it on just about any level. I mean, this is a tip of an iceberg type of a situation, and not a good one for sure. Other company documents show multiple maintenance failures at ST last year. A misrouted flight control cable. The failure to install a navigation box. Landing gear with a broken hydraulic line. One of the biggest issues with the quality of work at independent MROs is the quality of the workforce. At the largest major airlines, the vast majority of mechanics are licensed by the FAA. But not at independent MROs, like here at ST, where about two-thirds of the nearly 1,200 mechanics are unlicensed. That's because the FAA regulations don't require that all airline mechanics hold a license or certificate. Why isn't everybody who is uh, working on an airplane licensed to work on airplanes? Because the system has demonstrated that, in fact, people can perform the functions that are part of repairing an airplane that don't rise to the level of needing that certificate. But wouldn't it be better if they were all licensed? They're certainly able to be licensed. We don't require that. Um, Why not? Because, again, we've, the system has demonstrated that we can meet the safety standards because our inspectors go in and establish that the individuals are competent to do the work they're doing. This FAA licensing policy has implications for the workforce at ST, where the company has brought in less experienced and less expensive workers. Mechanics start at about $14 an hour. They've also gone global, bringing in foreign labor to work on airplanes in Mobile. They're issued work visas, and they're brought in from the Philippines, South America, the Ukraine, Africa. They're brought in from everywhere and anywhere. Tom has worked at ST for more than 10 years. A lot of these guys can't speak, read, or write English, you know? I'll see these guys 
practicing their ABCs. So they're practicing their ABCs, and they're supposed to be able to read a, uh, you know, Boeing 757 manual. Exactly, yeah. Mechanics use a lot of the same things that we use in the cockpit. They use, they have to follow checklist procedures. They have to follow maintenance manuals. If you got somebody who doesn't speak English, they can't be following the checklist to make the repair. They've got to essentially be winging it. In a written response to Frontline, ST said that foreign nationals make up less than 10% of their workforce. And all are assessed for language skills. And before hiring all mechanics, they conduct a thorough review of their work history and a verification of their background. But John says that's not what happened when he was hired. I applied online with a contracting company. I sent to my resume, and within a couple of days, they called me up and asked me when I could be there. So what did that tell you? Well, I thought I, I was pretty apprehensive of that. I, I expected an interview at least when I got there, but I was just told, show up, you've got the job. I didn't even have to present any of the documents of any of my training. I mean, it was, they took me on my word. Multiple FAA reports cite repeated concerns about the quality of the workforce at ST, a shortage of qualified maintenance personnel, concerns about English fluency, a lack of proper training, and repeated questions about management's commitment to safety. According to FAA records, the agency has levied 15 enforcement actions against ST Mobile since 2003. Only one resulted in a fine of $11,000. If you've got 15 enforcement actions, one $11,000 fine, and the same write-ups over and over again, happens again and again, that's a problem, isn't it? It's the responsibility of the inspectors. As they do their write-ups, they are getting corrective action, they are recommending enforcement actions, those enforcement actions are pursued if we have the evidence. Um, based on their expertise, I'm satisfied that they are satisfied that this is a company that's meeting our standards. It's not working, and you do this enough, and uh, we're a joke. Inspectors become a joke. We come in there and they're going, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, whatever. We'll just continue with doing what we're doing because there hasn't been a consequence big enough to change our attitude on this. One of the most troubling things I heard at ST involved a major FAA inspection here last April. So tell me about this particular inspection. How much warning did everybody have? Probably a little more than two weeks that we knew this was going to happen. Two weeks of warning. And did the FAA indicate what it was looking for? We had meetings and we were informed on the things that we needed to go ahead and prepare for. Several workers told us that in preparation for the FAA inspection, there was a massive cleanup. It was amazing all the stuff that was thrown out. We had dumpsters full of stuff carried out of there constantly. What kind of stuff were you throwing away? Aircraft parts that were unmarked, the trackability on there. If the trackability of an aircraft part is invalid, then that part is no good and it's supposed to be destroyed and got rid of. So wait a minute, so these were parts that are illegal? That would be the easy way to say it, an illegal part. According to FAA reports, one of the most pervasive problems at ST has been its handling of airplane parts. Since 2004, ST has been cited repeatedly for failing to properly tag, document, and track parts through its maintenance system. Several workers told us that prior to the FAA inspection, untagged, illegal parts were moved to this rented warehouse not far from ST. So this is the place which supposedly is just loaded up with parts that are undocumented illegal, right? Yep. In the trash here are some uh, papers that are linked to United Airlines for a uh, controlled part of some kind. So clearly this is a spot that ST is using for something. Several workers told us that after the inspection, some of the illegal parts were taken back to ST. So eventually what is happening is parts that don't have the paperwork, parts that are illegal, end up on airplanes that fly passengers Correct. around this country. Correct. I think that would shock a lot of people. Well, that would, yeah, that would shock me. And it did shock me. 
In response, ST wrote Frontline that it does not have untagged or undocumented parts, that all parts used on aircraft are properly documented, and that its records are regularly audited by the FAA and airlines. Based on what we've showed you with documentation interviews, how would you characterize ST Mobile as an operation? I, I think I'm, I would be deep, deeply concerned over their viability to be any kind of consistent uh, organization uh, with the stuff I've seen here to the point where pending um, investigations, they should be suspended. Something's seriously wrong here, and this is we need to investigate this. Our investigation of ST focused on just one facility in the vast $29 billion global MRO industry. But many insiders say the trend lines with maintenance are clear. What we hear time and again from people who are in the field, in the trenches as it were, is that you know, over the years, with this wonderful system we've created, we created this huge margin for safety. Mm -hmm. And then what is happening because of all the pressures here um, in the airline industry in general, and specifically in maintenance, is we're kind of eating away at that margin. We're borrowing from the margin. What do you say to that? Well, I would say over the last 10 or 12 years, we've actually reduced the risk in aviation by over 80% for fatal accidents. So if anything, we've expanded the safety margins. We haven't eaten away. But the idea that, that we might affect the safety margins is a very high concern for the FAA. It is what we focus on. Is the industry borrowing from its safety margin? I think there's no question. It's, it's simply not good enough to say, well, you know, let's look at the safety record and let's look at the statistics as a way of not addressing what could be problems that are fomenting now. The FAA says that everything is fine. I think there are an awful lot of experts in the industry that I've spoken to that question that. How much evidence is there, if at all, that safety is being compromised by this system of repair and maintenance. It's gonna be at the expense of a smoking hole at the end of the runway. I mean, I hate to see it come to that point, you know? It's gonna be more reactive than proactive. And the downside is, is there's gonna be people that are gonna die, and I hate to see that happen. Of course, no one can predict a crash. But industry insiders are increasingly sounding the alarm about the high cost of flying cheaper. and other frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org. Frontline's Are We Safer? is available on DVD. To order, visit shoppbs.org or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS.